last season on The Privateer. This is Adam. Adam was a privateer working a nine to five job to finance his passion for racing bikes. Last year, parts and training helped him get way faster, but success doesn't happen overnight. This year, his program has been turned up to 11 with full factory support. Will he be able to break into the pro ranks? We're about to find out. Adam is wrapping up his last season as the privateer. He finally has some time away from the office, the gym, and the race tape. It's the perfect opportunity to reflect on his experience, starting from the very beginning. Let's go back to the beginning. How mm. did this whole series come around and how did you end up being the guy? Well, I've been, I worked at, I've worked at Pink Bike for well, five years total now and I worked there for like three years previous. And um, they were just starting out their YouTube channel. I was just in the office one day and one of the guys pulled me aside and said, I've got an idea, what do you think? Do you want to do it? Like the thing is it suited me perfectly because it's, it's my, you know, my story of riding and, but it's so many other people's story as well. Like they've been riding for years and they get to a certain level but can't get that extra distance. And particularly with the expense of mountain bikes, I'm sure it's the same in any sport like moto or car racing, anything like this. So you have like huge overheads and you're kind of juggling time to train, time to make money, all these things. So that that's the story. It could have, could have been anyone, but I mean, it made sense just that it was me. I was actually almost uh, the perfect guy for it. If you look at some of my results, I'm like top 10 regionally and kind of coming in those positions where I'm like being a lot of riders, but I'm always like behind the pro guys and the people that have like fully committed to it, you know, because I'm, I'm still working a job. I've got to a certain, I've been riding for years and years and I've always done it for fun and loved racing, like racing with my mates and quite often the goal would just be to beat your mates and you know I've done it for years and I started to see a, a pattern or like a plateau in my results where I keep getting to a certain point and felt like I was doing everything I could to get those results. I was very open-minded to see um, what we could achieve with the series through racing and stuff because you actually push yourself and you're doing deliberate practice like you get faster and stuff like that so yeah I knew like I had some weaknesses like we saw in the first episode like massive mobility issues and nowhere near as strong as I could be so I knew there's potential there for myself and I felt like I had good technique so if we could um, improve on that I felt like that could fill some of the gaps to get me some better results. Working with Todd has been amazing. Like, uh, there were a lot of challenges there initially, trying to get up to strength. Breathe down, go straight down, straight. That's good. That's best. Stop. Okay, put your knees down. You just scored one out of three. Keep going. No, you're still not there. No, there it is. I was keen to be an open book because I know a lot of people could probably relate to that. Yeah, it's. I thought it'd be quite interesting, not showing you know like the perfect end product, and I knew it was going to be. I knew if I applied myself, I'd be able to make big, big gains. But yeah, obviously, like it's pretty hard to take some of that criticism from Todd and stuff like that. Because I'm going to measure you. That's like 18 versus 25 inches from your hip. Do you know what it should be? No. Zero. You are the worst hamstring mobility I've yet to see in 24 years. Oh boy. I think quite often people can relate to that and you know connect on on with that more so than look how amazing my hamstring mobility is. You know. Did I, did I feel like a better racer by the time I got to Whistler in season one? For sure I did, like, the strength work I'd done, I just felt so much stronger, like the bars aren't as twitchy, like, 
you, you honestly notice a huge difference where like I wasn't getting fatigued and I could hold on for longer and it meant I could actually go faster the whole way down the track. Whereas, you know, I just, you just don't notice yourself fading as much. And that around that time, I really felt like I was pushing myself and I was a lot more on the edge and I was taking risks and um, definitely riding better than I ever had really. To be honest, I was, I was a little bit disappointed with my result. I thought I was going to get a load of um, bad feedback from that one. I was like, 57th. Oh, I was like, oh shit, like, I'm going to get flogged in the comments. And then, like, everyone was really positive about it. And I was like, oh, cool. <laughs> Whistler's a lot easier just logistically and knowing what's going on. And then um, me and Chris Ritchie, the videographer, went to Italy and yeah, it was just like a whole new ball game really, like trying to figure out up these like winding Italian roads, like where the tracks were. The tracks are very different, like everything in Whistler is very well built. You kind of know what to expect. Like there's not really that many surprises, but yeah, these trails in, Whistler, in Italy were just like crazy surprises, loads of rocks, super dusty, like it was a whole different ball game. And that's part of the challenge of it, is like you have to adapt and try and um, adjust to a completely different environment. Yeah, we got lost a bunch of times trying to find the trails, like we did some track walks and stuff like that. And then, uh, yeah, I found, found it really challenging. We like went and did a bunch of filming the night before practice, um, which we kind of learned after doing this is like, it's not ideal to sort of weigh yourself out before the practice and yeah it was a it was a whole different kettle of fish you know and yeah i'd say like i've looked at all these pictures on pink bike of um finale Ligure and it looked amazing because you basically have all these photos of like this big crowd on the last descent and then you have the sea but what people don't see is like you've got three minutes of flat pedaling before you get to that like final descent there and it's it's like massive day basically 50k I started off the day chasing around Remy Absalon and luckily he drove us up and showed us where the trails were. There had actually been um, a huge crash. Alex Kangas, his amazing rider, had um, like had a big injury on some of the rock sections. And we ended up spending like two or three hours in uh, just on the hillside there with everyone waiting around for him to be airlifted off. So I think I was like the third rider to drop after that huge wait and yeah, to say I was like a little bit anxious was, you know, an understatement. <laughs> yeah, you can see it's pretty swollen. Definitely feels broken. Well, they thought it might be fractured originally. The radiologist thought so. And then the orthopedics guy said there wasn't one, so. But as you can see, it's like pretty puffed up. I've severed or like stretched a ligament in this finger. Um, I also broke my little finger twice. There was an avulsion fracture of the knuckle and then I broke it clean at an angle at the bottom. Um, and like, it's still not the same. You can see it bows out that way. And um, there was a lot of like tendon and damage to the palm. Because if you, if you watch the video, like, it's amazing I didn't have worse injuries, but I definitely, my hand took a f the full brunt of the impact. It still hurts every day. I didn't expect it to be as popular as it, as it got in season one. Like, it was crazy. And I honestly didn't realize how popular it was until sort of after Whistler and like when I went to Italy as well, like people started to come up to me and talk to me about it and yeah, like it was crazy. But we see so much marketing, so many marketing videos which you can't really connect to or you see like videos of these top guys and you can't really relate to how they got from A to B. You just see like amazing 
that that's incredible like you look amazing but you know you don't really know what's gone into that what was i stoked on in season one like the whole experience was awesome like getting to ride with um some of the amazing riders like fabian cuisini and talking to remy absalon seeing like behind the scenes a bit more like how he his teams run it's like literally him another rider and then there's one guy that does the mechanics everything and um it was a bit eye opening really and um doing the track walk with sam hill was pretty amazing like that was a highlight for sure like I was so surprised how much he opened, like, told us about line choices and all the like, the clarity of his thought. Like, just on the track walk, he, it made so much sense the lines he was picking, and like, you could almost you just see his lines after he explained them, and you're like, oh yeah, that's the perfect line. And yeah, stuff like that was an amazing experience, and just honestly working with Todd was eye-opening. Like, you, you know, you think you you know a certain amount about a sport, and then he shows you all the things that other riders are doing that you, you're not doing and like honestly stretching yoga a lot of the mental stuff that he shared and nutrition as well like there's so many things I wasn't doing or didn't know about that um, I learned in that first season and they just feel like and they make you a bit of a better person and the sort of healthy lifestyle choices really that improve your well-being at the end of the day. It's been awesome to produce the series and work on the series. Like, I can't believe how much um, knowledge has been shared from some of the top guys that have like really opened up. And I feel like um, this, the last two years of video, like this would have helped me huge when I was like 15. And, and honestly, like I've been racing that for years. And one of the reasons for me wanting to do this is to help share knowledge and what to do and and really hope that other people can learn from my own experiences and yeah don't don't get too hung up on you know whether it should be me or someone else or whatever but like um hopefully this knowledge can help you know 15 year olds or up and coming riders that definitely you know should uh yeah hopefully get some support as well. Next time on The Privateer. People are giving me shit on the internet. <laughs> yeah, it was pretty brutal, particularly for the confidence and stuff like that.